Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ludi Season 13. We have a match from Division 2. We have Moai Fan Club versus Honeycomb, and I'm here with Chili. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you, Matthew. Glad to be here with you. Really looking forward to the game. Division 2, so we can expect some really high caliber gameplay. Um, we have a Moai chain going on in the chat, and I think the Moai. Uh, yeah, squad have certainly earned their reputation. They've had a very solid performance in Division 2 so far, but Honeycomb have definitely been putting in work as well. The losses they've had, they've just barely had, so we'll see if they can clutch as the underdog. How are you doing? It's been it's been amazing, and this Ludi season, there's been so many good teams, and there's, some, and there's been so many good matches, so I'm expecting a really good match out of these two teams. It's... We're starting off on zones in clutch, so definitely kind of more... You like starting off on zones because they kind of like... Either you either get like... You either get uh, beaten or you don't. And um, <laughs> what ends up happening is that so a lot of times in zone matches you can see... Oh, does this team have better special coordination? Do they have better mechanics? Do mm. they feed? Do they stay in pairs? And it really just helps identify. And the first match is where things, even even game one is intense. Because Definitely. that's your first match where you're up against these guys. And you have, and sometimes if it's a new team, you have no idea what you're expecting. And I think throughout the season, Moai Fan Club, they're currently 3-0 and Honeycomb is currently 2-2. So Honeycomb definitely being the underdogs of this match. Let's see if they can really show off right here on Zones and Club. Yeah, we get a bit of an insight into compositions here. Explosher, love to see that on zones. Flushing machine, T Tech. We've got Elite, a double T Tech from the uh, Honeycomb as well. So we're seeing a bit of a uh, post patch meta here. Let's go. Definitely people giving the buff their Ink Strike a go. This will be interesting. We love in the bucket from Adapt. And we do see Phil right there getting that pick off of the leader. And now the Slush Machine's going, going to go down to Adapt here. And Adapt's just going to be shark around that wall. Trying to get any picks he can. And there's the pick off of Stealth. And it looks like Honeycomb they might be able to change the zone here. As we do see the triple strike come out there. The Slush trying to get Adapt out of the way there. But it looks like the the, the beginning zone is going to be on the Honeycomb here. And yeah, they do Adapt get first tap. Ad Ad Adapt did uh, really nice. I love that splat bomb roll he did on the pillar just to secure that kind of opening kill. Um, they do have the zone. It looks like four upper side though, so it is a bit of a scrap in the middle at the moment. There's not really been a good advantage to kind of clutch, and Moai are going to get a penalty on the board. Four upper side though, so everything to play for, and we're only a minute in. This he jumping out there. And now Honeycomb, they gotta, they gotta stay together, charge up the specials, see what they can do here. There goes the strike, and they have a few more specials ready. They're popping all of those strikes. They have the <laughs> weight breaker ready. The Booyah Bomb is out for Moai Fan Club. Trying to paint up the zone, and the Booyah Bomb does great work for them. And now Honeycomb two down, and they have to be really careful here, as we do see one of the D-Techs jumping out again, and Moai Fan Club keeping that zone in their favor. Definitely. I love seeing all the ink strikes. I'm just so used to crabs back and forth, so this is a very interesting change of pace. I think it was the right decision for the teammate to jump out there. Honeycomb really do need to regroup and have a coordinated push here. It looks like they did get a pick, but then they've been promptly avenged oh. by the machine, and we see the crab out as well, so this is looking really messy. Two down on Honeycomb. Time is ticking away, and they're going to need to make a play soon, but with three of the team down, this is looking really, really rough. And now we just see Yara on that splash, getting that pick, giving that trade is just what they needed. And that's going to be the game for Moai Fan Club. So now Honeycomb, they really got to be sticking together. They had the try strikes to their advantage, but it just wasn't enough to really take that win. So now they really have to see what they can do here. Try to get whatever picks they can and move in as a team. Because those two T-Techs push, push together, that might be huge. And it might put Moai Fan Club in a pretty tough location. Well, Moai Fan Club taking the first win. Let's see what they have to offer next as we're going to be moving on to Claim Blitz on Museum. Yeah, I think it was, um, it, it felt like a bit of a stalemate at the start, like a lot of scrapping back and forth, even numbers on the board. But when Moai Fan Club did get that opportunity to capitalize, they took advantage of that beautifully. And from there, the pressure was huge. I think there was a lot of trading between the two. And of course, when you're at a deficit, you just really cannot afford uh, trades. So yeah, Moai did really well there. But Clambit's Museum, very different map mode combination. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? It's definitely, I do like it, but uh, as we were talking about before, before the set started, 
On Museum, Clans, there's a lot of locations to push. Even that little block to go up to the enemy's clan basket right through mid is definitely a huge vantage point, and Moai Fan Club can easily use that to their advantage and get any picks they can off of Honeycomb. So they're really gonna have to play around in flanks and adapt. He has that easy he has an easy spot to flank. So we could see some very nice slusher flanks, which is what I'm gonna wanna see from Honeycomb here. And now Moai Fun comes to just have to keep up that pressure. And if they do, and if Honeycomb do, does choose to go all those uh, triple in strikes again, it could be bad. It could be bad for Moai because they might have they might have more cover for rushing the clan basket, which is might it might just uh, be what they need to really yeah. match. Definitely. I mean, it's it's quite interesting in the sense that Moai Fan Club have a much smaller roster than Honeycomb, so I'll be interested to see if they adapt in terms of swapping players out and more just thinking of their compositions and strategy. I mean, there's definitely some good moments from Honeycomb in the last game, so I think Clan Blitz will suit their weapon choices so far. We'll see what we can pull off and we're not going to waste any time we're going to get straight into it this is a really important game for honeycomb because one one is such a different position psychologically to being 2-0 down this early on and we do see the double slosh coming up from my fan club and we do see a rapid coming up from honeycomb so let's see how they can really go around this pain especially with that squeezer on the side of moai and now we do see a lot more LD on the side, a lot more spe uh, special type of abilities on the side of Honeycomb. So you see how they use that to their advantage. And the Slash Machine immediately rushing and getting taken out there. They pop the crab. They try to get Murrayan out of the way there, but the triple instrict forcing that crab to move down. Yeah, forced him off the plat and put him in a more disadvantageous position. But two going down for Honeycomb here. So Moai probably going to have the first chance to get some good map control here and get on the board. I do want to just note Honeycomb's comp as well. as well. It's a quad in-strike comp. You would never have seen this pre-patch. But I'm sure Honeycomb have a strat in mind in terms of overwhelming uh, Moai fan club. They've recovered well from the deficit there. And it looks like it's a pretty even skirmish right now. In-strike's coming out everywhere. Booyah bomb in response. And two down on Honeycomb's side, so a really messy opening. I can see Honeycomb, they're really just trying to get their crabs out of the way there. But with Aaron going down there, and the two down on the side of Honeycomb, this is going to be interesting because now Moai Fan Club, they have the chance to push here. And Murian taking out that slosh, a huge vital pick, completely forcing out the push there. And Adapt rushing it right to mid, and he does get the pick off the splash, which is going to be huge as now Honeycomb, they're able to take over mid and they're able to move in. That was a really, really good response there. Clutch save when the push was looking like it could happen from Moai. Adapt being wonderfully aggressive here, but still smart in terms of how they approach things. Putting Moai fan club on the back burner here. It looks like Honeycomb are starting to aggress slowly towards Moai's flat. And these trip, these ink strike oh! offenses, amazing, forcing people into terrible positions. And that is a wipe. This is Honeycomb's chance to get on the board. Honeycomb's chance is here, but no, one of their team picks goes down, and they need to get those clams together. They pop another triple in two down on the side of Moai Fan Club. They need to be combining clams. They have enough to push, but they just can't get it off, and Aaron's going to be going down there. Two down, three down, but that's going to be a trade there, and it's just going to be Marion alive, forced to back up there. Moai Fan Club just barely saving that push. Honeycomb, they weren't able to get those clams together, and now... Moai Fan Club has the chance for taking over mid. Saw so people in center. Moai got wiped and then three were down again. That that in most circumstances really should have got Honeycomb on board. I don't know if it was just unfortunate circumstances or if maybe people got excited about the push and didn't get their clams together. But it's, you know, you really need to be coordinated as a group to get a good clam blitz score. You can't just kind of cheese it by getting numbers down. And unfortunately, we're essentially back in a neutral position and that push has amounted to naught. That being said, Honeycomb showing that they can play this map well, showing that the comp is working for them and has been able to displace the crab. And we've got two minutes on the clock and everything to play for right now, but Honeycomb seem a lot stronger this game. So really just have to, now as we do see the push coming in here, the Sush Machine going down there, Adab trying to get whatever pick he can, but he's getting into that 2v1, but the force it back up and Adab sees the live here. But no, it looks like Eren's going to be going down there Ooh. through that squeezer. And now it's time to a 3v3 on the board. And it's back in that pick there. The pop is crapped on the Sanamoi fan club. And their T-Tech is forced to really get out of there. 
Yeah, again we've seen the crab tank though on Moai's part forced immediately off the platform. They're not allowed to just sit there for free, which is good. Adapt's movement on Honeycomb's part has been absolutely brilliant this game as well. We've just seen some such fantastic engagements. Right now Honeycomb have a member down, but they are regressing and applying pressure. Mid, mid is looking uh, well controlled. Beautiful ink strike there, helping shut down the Booyah bomb. And it looks like we're having a few skirmishes here. Free down on Moai fan club's part again, so this could be Honeycomb's chance. But it looks like someone's broken through and might be able to get on the board. We do see the T-Tech, they have 7 clubs, they have 13 clams ready, but no Pew Pew on that squeezer, forcing them out again. But they do have the chance to have an ink strike ready, their Sasha Machine goes down, they're 2 down on the side of Moe's bank club, and they're able to get the push down here. Now the strike is getting popped there, they're trying to get whatever pick they can, the crabs is going to get, trying to shut it down. But no, it looks like they might down to the machine now, but no, they do get the pick, it's still going to be 1 down. They have what they need to really push here. But no, the T Tech going down there, and with two down, it looks like Moy Fan Club saves their basket once again. Yeah, beautiful play by Pew Pew there. Pew Pew, of course, notorious for being a jet squelcher god in a splat two. Doing brilliant work with the squeezer there. Honeycomb have had so, so many opportunities to get on the board here, and it just seems to be slightly falling apart in terms of coordinated positioning for a push. Maybe getting a little bit anxious about getting on the board, and it's understandable after how that first game went. I mean, Honeycomb do feel like they've been the ones that have had the opportunities here. We are going to be going into overtime, it looks like, and this really could be anyone's game. And with just that overtime, it's going to be interesting because Honeycomb, they've had the chances to really push here. But now it looks like Moai Fan Club, they do have a chance here, but no, their squeezer goes down. And Adapt is trying to flank into their base. And this trust strike forcing that crowd off, but no, Adapt's going to be going down there. And we do see Honeycomb, they do have a chance, but they are too down. So let's see what they can do here. But no, Marion goes down there. And it's just fish this scene. And they're going to be going down there. Three down on the side of Honeycomb. And this is a chance for Moai Fan Club to push up. Yeah, that was a delayed wipe um, on Honeycomb's part, essentially. I mean, maybe the nerves kicking in a bit. This is scary now with Honeycomb on the back, but Moai have the specials ready. I thought they'd kind of blown a lot of their specials just to get into a neutral state, but then they had the Booyah Bomb there. Looks like Yaru's setting up, waiting with the... There's two power clams on Moai's part. Pew Pew is going for it, and they are going to break the basket and clutch that one out. So that is 2-0 to Moai, but that was a much, much harder game for them to get the point. Yeah, Honeycomb really, they really did their best and their defense, it just wasn't enough to stop Moai Fan Club and Pew Pew with the big brain strap just going on those grates and throwing in the clamp from above. They couldn't really do much about it other than the Rapid just trying to do as much damage as they can. But now, it's going to be a 2-0 and Honeycomb's going to be in an interesting spot here. They have a lot of pressure on them now. Heading, next match being Tower Control Haggle. They might have the chance, if they are willing to run the quad triple ink strike, they could use that to easily throw anyone off the tower. And mm. I can see they're really trying to use it to counter their counter um, the crab on Moai, but they might need more overall, spe they might just need more, spe more special variety to really yeah. help them out. That's what I'm thinking that like, we could do, is seem probably something like a bubbler on Terra. I don't think quad ink strike's gonna happen. That last game certainly an illustration of how powerful the uh, triple ink strike can be post buff. So I think uh, that was a good uh, advertisement on Honeycomb's part for that. And Honeycomb mechanically, in terms of their engagements, in terms of winning 1v1, revenging teammate deaths, Honeycomb have, have done really well. They've been on par with Moai Fan Club in that regard. But I think when it just comes to that team coordination, when it comes to really solidifying a push and synergizing in terms of positioning, that seems to be where Moai are a bit more consistent and rehearsed than Honeycomb. And it's a shame because um, I think if Honeycomb were a little bit more synced up, they would have got on the board that game and, and that Clan Blitz match would have been theirs. But everything to play for. The beauty of looty matches is they're a best of nine. It gives people time to adapt. It gives people time to regroup and uh, respond to uh, what their opponents are throwing at them. And Tower Control, Hagglefish, uh, a great match for more skirmishes. Quite hard to get a domineering KO on. So I think it's going to be quite scrappy. I'm hopeful it's going to be a very uh, intense game like the previous we just saw. It's going to be really interesting to see what Honeycomb can do because now they're in a tough position. But as you said before, they do have the team coordination that they need. And as long as they can really pull off these triple in strikes well, I think they could really take this game. Well, let's see if there's any kind of changes in composition in, in line with how the last couple of games have gone.
We're seeing on Moe's part, we're seeing the squeeze again, T Tech slashing machine and splash are the sticking with that. We are seeing three ink strikes, but we are seeing the splash come out from Honeycomb's part, so maybe they're thinking the one crab will just help balance out their comp a little bit, give them a little bit more diversity in terms of uh, getting those openings and making those pushes. And now both teams pushing in the mid right away. Would you see that slash machine flanking on that left? But no, they're instantly gonna get taken out there. And the Kraven right on a dap. Forcing a dap out of there to try to regain as much health as possible. But Pew Pew gonna be taking them out. And now Pew Pew on that flank. But no, the Rapper will let the flank. Pew down on the side of Honeycomb. And this is a chance for Moai Fan Club to push here. With, and with the triple in strike out, completely forcing out Aaron. And now, the West Fan Club, they're able to get that push Aaron with the dab going down. Looks like they're going to be reaching into that first checkpoint. As we see, they're just going down one by one. They're really feeding into them here. Delf on that tower with the Booyah Bomb out, trying to saw them out as long as possible. Reaching that first checkpoint with another triple ink strike. Forcing now a dab going down to the Booyah Bomb. Completely just pushing up three down, and that is a wipe. On the side of Honeycomb, Ooh, oh my gosh! The club <laughs> will not let them push at all. And with the and with the <laughs> with the Zuka coming in, forcing them out again. They pass checkpoint two. Adapts trying to fill them off tower, and with two down, three down. It looks like Q2 forced it back up, but a big push from Moai Fan Club pushing all the way down to 26. And Honeycomb has a lot of work to do if they want to keep this win. They do indeed. That was a really, really scary showing there. Moai fan club, a lot of that splat one, uh, splat zones game one energy coming through from them there. You just see how much they take advantage as soon as they get the numbers. They're so deep into enemy territory. Completely put Honeycomb on the back foot. And again, two down on Honeycomb's part. So Moai are not going to relent. They are going to keep on the offensive. They are not going to settle for that score 26. And so, so difficult for Honeycomb from a decision making standpoint now because they are on the back foot. They are forced to push. Moai can kind of calculate and just settle for a neutral state if they want to, if they're confident that's what they need. Honeycomb are burdened now with having to push incredibly deep if they want to win. Three down again, Moai on the board, tower moving, specials coming out left, right and centre. Honeycomb getting forced back into their spawn, an absolute onslaught here. Pew Pew deep in, stealth jumping around there off the tower trying to get some picks. This is terrifying for Honeycomb. With the splash going down there, Adapt's forced to just try to pick them off tower. They have the Zooka ready, Pew Pew getting right back on that tower. They're all alive now, they have the Zooka ready. And no, but the Adapt's gonna be coming in there, trading with them, but still two down on the side of Honeycomb. Stealth, looks like they're gonna get taken out by Aaron on the Rapid. And they're just trying to push as far as they can into the base, reaching that third checkpoint. But they're gonna get completely thrown off there. Aaron on that Rapid, not letting them get any space at all. And with the Dash Shark, I don't think they're going to be able to KO. Honeycomb has a lot of work they really need to do here if they really want to take this lead. Definitely. Aaron did really well with the Rapid in terms of positioning and spacing there. I noticed they were dodging damage while managing to get the chip they needed to stop my way on the push. But Phil Stan here with the Booyah Bomb. No fear. Not going to settle for the scoring again. Keeping up the offensive pressure. Honeycomb, you know, looked like they were quite hesitant to get back out onto the ground because like you say, they were really struggling to get that wipe. There were people sharking and loitering and Moai, brutal offensive here. They've had the numbers advantage in terms of plays for the vast majority of this game and Honeycomb are trading a lot and when you're in this position, you cannot afford to be trading and it's looking like they're scrambling here to get a push going but Moai setting up defensively, using those specials to force people back and putting Honeycomb in a really challenging position with only a minute and a bit on the clock. I can see that Honeycomb, they're staggering on their pushes and they just haven't gotten enough room here. They're not really playing around each other that much and that's been going in a lot trying to solo them but it looks like he might be able to get that double there and he does wow. get the double there and this is a chance. <laughs> For Honeycomb to push here, and I'm about to see my words. As we do see Marian on the crab, trying to force them out here. Honeycomb reaching that first checkpoint, but the Booyah Bomb throwing him off. And they have the crab ready on the side of Moai Fan Club. But Adapt just trying to force them out as much as possible. They're trying to get onto that checkpoint, but they really can't. They're trying to get forced out here. Adapt goes down, but they reached that checkpoint before being taken out. And with three down on the side of Honeycomb, 30 seconds left. Aaron forced to fight that splash. And they do get double teamed, and they're going to get taken out. And with just 20 seconds left, Honeycomb, they don't have a lot of time to really mush in here. And Moai Fan Club, they have the, they have the triple insert, they have the Blue of ready, and they pop the crab. And it looks like Honeycomb just hasn't gotten a chance to really push in here. 
and now again Moai Fan Club another push from them putting the pressure on and the triple insert comes out there but they just can't get on tower in time and that's going to be game 3-0 and Moai Fan Club's lead. That was a uh, painful one to watch in the sense that I, I think as soon as Moai got the momentum they didn't really relent for the full five minutes. Honeycomb making some good plays. We saw Adapt there getting uh, two down in what looked like a really challenging position to get the two picks. And we saw an attempt of a good coordinated push there with the crab tank, but too little, too late, unfortunately. Moai with that really strong advantage early game that gave them the luxury of making the decisions in regards to how offensively they wanted to play the rest of that set. Honeycomb forced to try and make offensive plays, but still constantly on the back foot. You do see with teams sometimes once they get a decent lead, they kind of start getting quite passive and allowing their opponents opportunities to start making off offensive counterplays. Uh, Moai Fan Club absolutely did not stop the offense for the entirety of that game, and that must have been a really, um, you know, mentally taxing game for um, Honeycomb. But Rainmaker on Mincemeat Metalworks, really exciting map mode combination. I know people are not big on Mincemeat, but I think Rainmaker is a, a good, good mode for it. And this is going to be a really, really important game for Honeycomb to win. You do not want to be going 4-0 down against a team as scary as Moai. And with now being Raymaker or Mincebeat, it's going to be interesting to see if... Because Moai Fan Club, they could easily just... This is the first time we're seeing Raymaker, I believe. So now with Moai Fan Club's aggression, they could really just push up into Honeycomb's base and stall it out for the rest of the game if they really wanted to mm. and, and honeycomb's gonna have to play around that and they have to really counter the counter aggression mo uh Mo fan club i think if we saw that kind of aggressive energy we saw from honeycomb in the in the clam blitz game that would work really well uh, on mincemeat rainmaker you can get huge scores really quickly if you manage to just take advantage of uh, kind of play deficits really and um Honeycomb has certainly shown they have that offensive potential to do so. It's more on the defensive side. They've uh, really struggled across this set, and that could just be a symptom of Moai's uh, really impressive offensive coordination rather than anything Honeycomb is doing particularly wrong. But we'll see if there's any adaptations going into this. We're seeing the true, uh, tried and true comp from Moai Fan Club still. We're seeing a bamboo on Honeycomb. You do not see one of those every day. You don't, Aaron, on the bamboo, the object shutter bamboo. That's going to be interesting to see what they can do here. But it looks like Moab, 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 Moai already getting that, um, getting the pop onto the Rainmaker is going to be huge for them. Trying to push him with as much as they can. And the crab getting cancelled by Adapt on that blaster. That's going to be huge now. As the triple ink strike comes out there, completely forcing them out. And this is Honeycomb's chance to shine. They could pick up the Rainmaker here and rush. But they do have specials ready on Moai Fan Club, so that, that has to be careful. But no, Aaron on the Rainmaker getting taken out by the triple in strike. And yeah, now, really good. good push here. Really good defensive triple in strike coming in from Moai Fan Club there. I will say, I absolutely adore Honeycomb's comp. I think it's really creative, but it also makes a lot of sense. Bamboo is going to be able to get some really solid chip damage from a lot of uh, safe positions, especially making the greats kind of off limits for Moai. Moai are picking up the Rainmaker, but they are a player down. They have just lost the Slosh Machine. Fishney deep in, but unfortunately not able to get that uh, kill on Yaru. That could have been a really good opportunity to get on the board. The triple strike forcing Stealth to retreat, so it's not been easy for Moai to push this yet. Numbers advantage on Honeycomb's side remaining. Adapt is doing work with this blaster from what I can see. Oh! The Bubbler beautifully oh, placed, and that's a rim. Double so direct. Absolutely beautiful coordination, and if Honeycomb can respond to this quickly, Adapt is in a really nasty position to do some damage here. They are going to get the pot, but it is really hard to take the Rainmaker on those greats. But this is Honeycomb looking like they've oh got a really Oh my god, and Adapt chance. again! And another direct, and they're able to clear checkpoint one. Three down on the side of Moai Fan Club, and we do see Marion forcing right into their base. But they're going to get taken down here, two down on the side of Honeycomb. And Adapt's going to get taken down there. That's a wipeout, but holy crap! I mean, that was wonderful in terms of beautiful offensive coordination from Honeycomb. Adapt is absolutely savage on that blaster. I don't know what he's drinking, but I would like some. I mean, Moai here, after getting the wipe, do have an opportunity to get some control, and they are taking advantage of that. That's a reverse wipeout. That is how you respond to a strong push from your opponents, and Honeycomb need to make sure they don't panic here, because this is do this is where we have seen them start to panic and then start going down one by one. 
currently they still have the lead. The splash on Matic is down. They have the numbers of X, but these triple ink strikes wreaking havoc. And it looks like Moai have managed to steal the Rainmaker and they've managed to push the 43. They have been stopped now. Three players down. This will be Honeycomb's chance. Aaron is going to pick up the Rainmaker, not waste any time. Adapt is already trying to get back to the midpoint and do some damage. He is going to get a kill on the Splash Matic. And no hesitance from Honeycomb here, which is what they need. They need to get on the board again. They need to be trying to get those picks. Aaron doing the right job of applying some offensive pressure from the back lines, but it looks like Moai are doing a really good job of staying alive, making it really, really hard for Honeycomb to make some progress here. And now, with two minutes left, Honeycomb. Honeycomb, they're trying to push you in here, but no. And that is a wipe in the 3k from the crab. And now, Moai fan club, they have the chance to push again, and they want to keep up that pressure as much as they can. The Booyah Bomb coming in here, forcing out Honeycomb, splitting all their players up there. But no, there's Slot Machine going down, and it's just that Rainmaker alive. And they're just trying to back up, trying to get time for their teammates to really spawn in here. Oh, good movement on the Rainmaker's part there. Fishney with a nice a, a attempt to shut the Rainmaker down, but, and, but Stealth has managed to bide a lot of time for their teammates to regroup. I mean, I, I, I just love the back and forth of this set so far. It's been, it's been so good to see. I mean, Yaru with that crab tank getting the triple shows you that the crab tank is not bad by any means. It had a very, very small slap on the wrist. Um, it is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. That being said, Honeycomb it's on the that. offensive again. That is a play. That is a, a, the splash going down. Adapt doing some work. That, but unfortunately, the splash going down as well. They oh, tried wow. to push and they've got to 50. Wait, Two down the side. If they get the pop here, they could cheese this maybe. They go down. And Aaron, they just have to push out Rainmaker, but no, the Booyah Bomb coming in, forcing them out there. They are getting jumps in. They're trying to keep up the pushes from one and one, but no. Marion goes down there, and it's just 50 left. They pick up the Rainmaker, and they're rushing it back. Are they just going to keep it there? Oh, I think that's a bit of a brave decision based on how good Honeycomb have shown they can play offensively here, but it looks like they may be going for the stall strap with 30 seconds on the clock. I don't blame them. I'd be spooked if I was Mo. I seen how Honeycomb have played this game in the, on, offensively, but unfortunately, that as you say, that was such a good Booyah Bomb. It just cut off cut off the ground uh, Honeycomb had to get that point lead, and now the, uh, the, splash, the Crab Tank has just been immediately kind of eviscerated with, between the Ink Strike and the... Uh, enemy fire and it looks like they are going to get away with stalling it out and Moai are going to go 4-0 up here but this absolutely could have been Honeycomb's oh, game in just slightly different circumstances mm. just unfortunately not enough time left on the clock I think there was two allies there on Honeycomb's part that had got round so yeah risky play from Moai it has paid off and I think Honeycomb can be extremely proud of how they fought for that uh, game and you know, if they'd have just got maybe one extra pick on that push, if they'd have took out um, the machine before that Booyah was off, that could have been a very, very different story. But Moai showing their resilience, hanging in there. And this is an incredibly challenging position for Honeycomb now. They are essentially on match point for the remainder of this set. It's going to be complete. It's going to be very interesting what will moai fan club do what can honeycomb do if they really wanted to reverse sweep here it all comes down to zone sturgeon now i mean zone sturgeon a map that we're all relatively familiar with as with you know as veterans of the game i know certainly moai are if one and two kind of veterans from the eu that will be very familiar with this map hopefully that's the same case for honeycomb i mean zones it's more about They must be feeling pressure now. I mean, psychologically, um, you know, they've got they've got everything to lose off the game. But you know, they, what they will hopefully be thinking about is the fact that some really golden opportunity to get on the board um, that last game. They definitely have the potential to take games off Moai. They've just got to kind of believe in themselves and not get tilted. But Moai have just been so good, uh, so consistent. That's why they've got the uh, you know the the record they have in Division Two. But there is a reason Honeycomb are a Division 2 team as well. And it really just comes down to what what can re what can they really do to counter? Because Moai Fan Club, they've had their special coordination on point. Mm, they and have. Honeycomb, they really have to counter that with their own specials. Because they've been running a lot of triple ink strikes. 
So they really have to play around those defensive plays, those big pushes. They really need to use triple ink strike for recovering themselves, able to get into their base and able to pop their crabs, which is what they really need here. But they really have to just use those triple ink strikes wisely. And I've never seen that before. That's so cool. <laughs> the match, I love the little match point logo. We're going to probably be seeing a lot of it if Honeycomb could hang in there. The blaster remains, the bamboo remains, the custom juniors out. That is a nice choice for this map mode. Let's see if that can do some work. I mean, if I were Honeycomb, what what I think they need to do, they just need to be a little bit calmer when they're on the back foot because I think they get a bit nervous when uh, in, in the face of aggression and it feels like they go down kind of one at a time and they just need to regroup and just coordinate the specials in the same way we have seen Moai do. But we're getting started here. The first pick does go to Moai, but they do revenge by getting the explosher down. Lots of uh, scrapping and skirmishing going on in mid right now. And Yaru sneakily hiding away in the greats underneath, trying to flank around, managing to get away with it. And Moai are going to secure the zone here. There were three down for Honeycomb at one point, and Yaru is wasting no time getting into their side. No time at all. And with that triple insert going in, it doesn't even matter that they're two down. They still keep that zone in with their blaster going to be going down there. Honeycomb trying to push up there. They are going to be able to get the cap. But Disney on that C Junior, it's just, it's enough. And now we do see Stealth on that T Tech trying to dodge that triple ink strike, whatever they can do. And now down to a 3v3. Adapt pushing right on the zone, getting a pick, popping that bubble. They really need to be careful of Adapt here. But now it looks like Adapt just soloing the zone right now. They've managed to get on the board. That's really important, and they needed that. I mean, it did look like they were going to cap a lot earlier, and I think they were just slightly damaged from the initial picks they got, and then the Explosher was just finishing everybody off on Honeycomb's part when they got to the zone. So, well done on the Explosher on uh, Moai's team, but certainly that's Pew Pew, I believe, for managing to uh, really slow down Honeycomb's assault. But Honeycomb have managed to get on the board, but then unfortunately getting immediately responded to. And again, they're on the back foot, but they do have the numbers advantage. And Fizney and um, Mayuran are in the zone. They're keeping up the offensive play. They're hopefully going to get a recap here. It looks like they should be able to, but oh, really struggling I... to under Moai's pressure. Adapt on that blaster, taking out the machine. And this is a chance. Adapt trying to go right into their base, but no, the Explo. The Explo just not letting them, but they are going to get that cap onto the zone there. The Explo, the T Tech goes down there. And now down to a 3v3, Honeycomb has that zone, but this thing gets taken up by that machine. And now it's time for Honeycomb to just, they gotta really back up here. As Moai Fan Club, they're keeping up that pressure on to adapt. After what are we watching here? Okay. This is adapt, adapt resorting <laughs> to squid bagging for psychological damage instead. Oh my gosh, that was a, that was a, a beautiful. 1v1. I mean, moment. I mean, Honeycomb, they've had the picks this game, but it's taking them a long time to cap the zone every single time. It seems like Moai, their composition, it just is much better on the paint front because uh, Bamboo and Blaster, they're not going to be helping you that much in regard to capping the zone outside of the specials. Three down on Honeycomb's part. Moai without a penalty, and that time a ticking away. Look how deep Yaru is. This is very scary. They need to get the numbers, and they need to get them now. Trying to push in here, but Fizzy can't do anything, and that's going to be the game. And the Moai fan club is going to be taking the set 5-0. Ooh, I mean, if you if you saw that just as a figure on the board, that would imply it was a straight sweep. But I I think that's a bit of an injustice to how well Honeycomb played a couple of the games. That you know, particularly uh, Clamor Museum and uh, Rainmaker on Mincemeat. I think under just slightly different circumstances, Honeycomb could have clutched both of those games and we could have been in for a much longer set here. But Moai continuing to be undefeated in Division 2, continuing to uh, be an absolute menace and showing why they have a, a, a good fan club behind them. But I think, you know, Honeycomb played really, really well in a lot of those um, games. I wouldn't be too disheartened. I think, as I say, Honeycomb's offence is really solid when they get an opening, but... I just feel like as soon as they were on the back foot, um, Moai were able to just break their defenses every single time, unfortunately. What are your thoughts? It was a very, they, Honeycomb, they really just kind of, they really just kind of fell apart, especially on their pushes. They didn't really get too many pushes during that set. 
And Moai fan club completely did the opposite. They were able to push in. They were able to, they were able to get whatever picks they could and adapt, just trying their hardest to really push him with the blasters and the slosh machine, but it just wasn't enough. And mm. they just really needed that special coordination. And that's what they, special coordination, just what they didn't have and what Moai fan club really did have. And it was such a quick, say it was if you blink honey if you blinked moai fan club had the zone if honeycomb was completely pushed back mm. yeah no it, it does make sense i think hopefully good learning for honeycomb from this hopefully they can kind of odd review the set and uh i think with just minor adaptations it could have been a very different story but a uh, big gg to both players thank you for giving us a really entertaining set regardless and uh where can we find you matt uh, you can find me anywhere really at matthew mega lol that's where I can just be found. I'm always commentating. I'm always looking to commentate sets. Especially since right now I'm trying to look for more Ludi sets to commentate. And this was my first Ludi set I've been able to commentate all season. And it was definitely such an interesting one to really watch happen. A quick 5-0 for Moy Fan Club. And I believe that's going to make them 5-0. I mean, I believe that's going to be get, getting them the 5-0 in their group. Yeah, they are going to be 5-0 after that. So Moai Fan Club is going to be entering Div 2 playoffs as the seeded first team. So congratulations to Moai Fan Club and GG's to Honeycomb. Y'all did so well. That was such a great set to watch. Honeycomb really just giving it them, giving it their all, especially with trying to use those, trying to use the triple in strikes to their advantage. So GG's to both teams. GG's indeed, and yeah, pleasure commentating with you, Matt. Um, glad, yeah, great uh, looty set to kind of uh, kick you off, and yeah, looty sets are just always fun, always entertaining. Um, I really envy, I feel for like the uh, seeding team for all the work they have to do to try and get uh, these uh, balanced divisions with the community. It continues to grow at such a wonderful pace, and uh, yeah, we're never going to be starved of rich content again, I don't think, with the way our wonderful community is growing. Um, but I've been Chili Boy, folks. You can find me at Twitter um, under Chili Boy, Chili Boy underscore Splat. Uh, I'm also getting into the commentating game in Splat Free and just yeah, thoroughly enjoying um, everything the community has on offer so far. We, I believe, are going to be saying farewell now and raiding IPL for Low Ink. So I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us and keeping us company. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye.